What's up guys, Eric here from TechSode TV and today we're taking a look at the top 30 unknown features on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. A lot of these features will also work on older versions of Galaxy Note devices, so if you have an older Note device, definitely test it out to see if these features work for you. And as usual, I will have time codes down in the description so you guys can quickly find the features you care most about. And if you guys appreciate video time codes, let me know by dropping a like down below. Typically, when you're using split screen view with two open applications, you're limited to just resizing the applications. And if you tap the bar, you only get this one option to switch the orientation of the two applications. However, if you open up your side panel, go to settings, and you turn on the apps edge. I'm gonna go ahead and go back now. Now, if I tap in the middle, you'll get an extra option, and this is adding an app pair to your app edge. So if I tap this, that's gonna shoot over to my app edge. And if I swipe open now, I swipe across to my apps edge and scroll down, you'll see that I just added a YouTube and Twitter pair. And as you can see, I already have two other app pairs. So if I tap one of the other ones, you'll see that it opens those two applications. And I can jump back in and switch to the one I just made. And you can see YouTube moved back to the top and Twitter opened up on the bottom. So if you're someone who uses this split screen mode often with specific applications, this is a great way to save those and get back to them quickly. While we're talking about the Apps Edge, there's one more thing that a lot of people don't know about. So if I open it back up, instead of just tapping an application, if you long press an application, you can then just drag it to the top and open it in a split screen view mode. But something else you can do is long press and drag it to the center, and you can open that up in a pop-up window that is movable and also resizable. This is excellent for the calculator, and I actually use this feature a lot. The window can also be minimized into a little bubble, which is similar to the Facebook Messenger bubble. And anytime, you can just tap it to open it back up. And if you tap these two squares, you can change the transparency of it as well. So especially with a calculator, if you want to see something behind it, you can drop the transparency and you can still interact with the application, but you can also see what's behind it. And if at any point you want this application to be full screen, you just tap this little box here and that'll put it either into split screen view if you're already in split screen view when you tap that button, or it'll open it up completely if you're not already in split screen view. This feature is also incredible for social media applications. So if I go ahead and grab Twitter, just long press and drag that over here. Now I can quickly message it back and forth with people on Twitter and then just minimize this and then quickly get right back into it whenever I need to, to message someone else. So this is a great way to keep applications always on your screen, but not taking up a lot of space. And in case you're wondering, you can have more than one of these pop-up windows open at the same time. Right now, I have five open, and I can move them all anywhere I'd like. And if I minimize them, they all stack on top of each other. And if I tap that stack, I can then see all the different ones and select one of them to open. And if you want to close an entire stack in one shot, all you have to do is long press the stack when it's minimized, drag to remove, and that'll remove all of your pop-up windows. If you have a few applications that you never want to close, there's actually a way to do that. So let's say, for example, you're exporting something. I've got Adobe Rush here, and let's say it's a really long video and I'm exporting it, and I wanna make sure that Adobe Rush doesn't close in the background while I may be playing a game, doing some social media, or even just turning off my screen. To do that, all I have to do is go back to my recent applications, tap the app icon for Adobe Rush, then tap keep open for quick launching. That's going to put a little lock icon here, and even if I close all other applications, this one is still going to stay open. And you can do this for up to three applications. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So one, two, three applications. Now if I try to do it for a fourth application, it's going to be grayed out. It's not going to let me because you can only do it for three. But now if I tap close all and come back here, you'll see that those three applications are still open, but the rest have closed. So this is an excellent feature for people who do a lot of photo or video editing on their phone, or for heavy gamers who don't want a game to close out when they walk away for a little bit. When you don't want the applications locked anymore, all you have to do is tap the lock icon, and that will unlock them. 
If you have friends over and they ask you on your Wi-Fi network and you have either a really long password that you often forget or you just don't feel like typing it in in front of them, then there's an even better and safer way to get them on your Wi-Fi network. All you have to do is pull down your notification shade and long press the Wi-Fi quick toggle, then tap the settings gear next to the Wi-Fi you're currently connected to, then tap this QR code option here at the bottom. Now, all they have to do is open up the camera app on their smartphone, aim it at this QR code, and tap the notification that pops up. And that'll connect them directly to your network without you having to give them your password. The best part is that this works with any smartphone. So here I have a Google Pixel 4a, and if I aim it there, you'll see that the icon pops up at the bottom. I tap that, and it connects me right to the network. And it also works for iPhones. So if I aim this iPhone here, you'll see I already have the notification pop up. Tap that, tap join. And now my iPhone is on the network as well. And that also reveals another unknown feature with any smartphone, and it's the fact that you can scan a QR code right from within the camera app without having to open up a special QR code scanner. As you saw, all you have to do is open the camera app, aim it at the QR code, and you'll get a pop-up right on your screen. And speaking of the camera app, let's go ahead and jump into it to show you some more unknown features. So a lot of times when you're holding a Note device, it's pretty big. And if you wanna take a selfie, you're gonna be holding it probably like this and trying to reach down and hit that button is pretty difficult. But what a lot of people don't realize about the camera application is that all you have to do is swipe up on the shutter button and now you have a floating shutter button that you can move anywhere you'd like. So now you can hold the phone securely and still reach the shutter button with ease. Then once you're done with the floating shutter button, just drag it back down and it disappears. Speaking of dragging down, if you wanted to take a burst photo, all you have to do is drag down on the shutter button and you'll start taking a burst photo. And in case you're wondering, you get up to 100 photos. The Note 20 Ultra has this awesome ability to zoom in all the way up to 50 times zoom, which is pretty incredible. But to be honest, the pictures at 50 times zoom really aren't that great. It's really just if you wanna see something really far away up close, it's a good way to do that. But you certainly won't be sharing those pictures on social media. However, if you switch to video mode, you'll see that you're actually limited to 20 times zoom when recording a video. If you wanted to go past 20 times zoom, there is a trick to do that. First, go back to photo mode, then change your aspect ratio to 9 by 16, and zoom in however far you want. Let's say you want to go all the way to 50x zoom. Now, if you hold the shutter button, you'll actually start recording a video at that full 50x zoom. There are a couple downsides to this. Number one, you're limited to a 1920 by 1080 video. And number two, you also can't zoom in and out anymore when you're in this mode. So you're locked into that one zoom level when you're recording like this. However, you do also get audio, which is great. When you're done recording, you just let go and it saves the video. Another great use for this is if you're taking pictures of people, then all of a sudden something really funny starts happening and you wanna start recording instantly. While you're taking pictures, you just stop pressing the shutter button and hold it instead, and you can quickly grab that funny moment without having to worry about trying to switch to video mode and missing it. One more very important thing to point out is you're gonna be recording in the aspect ratio that you have set. So at nine by 16, that's a pretty standard video resolution. But if you're taking a normal photo at three by four resolution, and I start recording now, then that's going to take a three by four video. That's not necessarily a problem, but I figured it was worth pointing out. If you have the Note 20 Ultra, it's a pretty big phone, and sometimes it's really hard to reach all the way up to the corners when you're inside of an application. A great way to more easily get to those corners is to simply double tap the home button and that'll bring everything down so it's much easier to get to the corner. This window is also resizable to any size you'd like. So if you have hands that are a little bit bigger, you can make this a little bigger. Or if you have really small hands, you can make this pretty small. You can also switch sides as well if you're left handed. And to get out of this mode, just tap anywhere in the black section. And it also remembers your settings. So if I go back into it, it'll go back down to the smallest size in the left corner. If you double tap the home button and nothing happens, you may not have this setting enabled. To enable it, pull down your notification shade, tap settings, let me go ahead and make this bigger now, then scroll down to advanced, tap that, and scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see one-handed mode right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that and just tap the toggle to enable one-handed mode. 
You'll also see that there's another way you can do it by gesture. So now if you swipe down on the home button, that's how you'd get into it. I personally prefer the double tap, so I'm gonna switch back to that. Speaking of double tapping, another thing that a lot of people don't know is that if you just double tap the recents button, it'll switch to your previous application. And now you can quickly switch back and forth between your two most recent applications. If you wanna be able to quickly switch between more applications, then there's another setting you can enable. To do that, just go to settings, tap display, scroll down to navigation bar, tap that. Now just tap swipe gestures. It'll tell you that you have to switch to using a gesture for one-handed mode, so let's do that. And now we can enable swipe gestures. And from here, you can just swipe across the bottom to switch between all of your applications. The rest of these gesture controls are basically just like an iPhone. So you swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to open your recent applications. And if you wanna go back, you can swipe in from the left or right side. One more unknown feature with this gesture-based navigation is that if you swipe up and in from one of the corners, you'll actually activate Google Assistant. Within the Samsung internet application, there's a couple things that a lot of people don't know. Number one, if you wanna quickly switch between tabs, all you have to do is swipe across the bottom and you can switch back and forth between your tabs. Another unknown feature with Samsung internet is that if you long press one of your tabs, you'll get these little icons here. And if you tap and drag these, you can actually reorder your tabs as well. And just like you can lock applications, like I showed you earlier, you can also lock tabs. So now if I try to swipe this tab away, it won't let me, but any other tab swipes away just fine. If I wanna unlock a tab, just tap the lock icon there. The photo editor has added an awesome new feature. So if I take this photo, tap edit, then scroll up a bit and tap this little paintbrush icon, then tap the pen type. There's a new pen type that looks like a wand and it's called auto doodle. If I tap this, and I'll make that a little bit bigger and I'll tap X here. If I draw something, like let's say I draw a house and I'm really bad at drawing stuff. So let's go ahead and just do this, right? Add some windows on there. You can see that it figured out I was trying to draw a house and it gives a bunch of options for little houses to add. This one looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that. Now I can move this around, I can resize it and rotate it and drop this house anywhere I want. But before that, these lines look a little bit too thick. So if I tap that pen icon again, I can reduce the size of those lines and you can see it reducing or getting bigger in real time. Tap the X and I can tap the check mark there and that just drew that right there for me. All right, now let's try something ridiculous. Let's go ahead and try and draw a dragon. So let's do a little dragon head here and here's the dragon mouth and a dragon foot and another dragon foot and maybe a tail that swoops around with a little spike thing on the end. And there's the dragon, give him like an eyeball and maybe some fire coming out of his mouth or something. And look at that, it actually got it. I cannot believe this awful drawing was able to be figured out to be a dragon. So let me tap that. That looks a hundred thousand times better than the dragon that I just drew. That is super cool. So again, you can move this around and you can change the color as well. I forgot to point that out a little bit earlier. And this is just an absolutely incredible, it's just, it blows my mind that it actually got the fact that I was drawing a dragon. That's super cool. So I'm just gonna drop that there, tap the check mark. And now I have a much cooler looking dragon. So if you're someone like me who has absolutely terrible handwriting and terrible drawing skills, as you just saw, you can make really cool pictures using this new auto doodle tool. Now, unfortunately, this tool is limited to editing a photo. I'm not sure why Samsung didn't include this in the Samsung Notes application because this pen tool is not available there, but I'm hoping they make it available in a future update. One more thing I wanna point out is that you can now draw in real time on videos. So if I wanna draw a couple arrows pointing to this watch, I tap the check mark up here and I play it back you'll see the arrows draw in in real time. And these arrows were drawing at the same speed I was drawing them at. So if I drew them a lot faster, the arrows would move a lot faster. And in case you guys are wondering, that special auto doodle tool does work here as well. One more thing I wanna point out, if you use that auto doodle tool, it will draw that in real time as well. And if you drag these sliders on the end, you can change how long the doodle stays visible for. 
The S Pen has had air actions for a while now, which allow it to do things like take a picture by pressing the button, or do things like navigate backwards by doing a backwards carrot shape while holding the S Pen button, or being able to open recent applications by doing a forward carrot shape, or go home by doing an upside down V shape, as well as a handful of other features. But what a lot of people overlook is the fact that these are customizable. So if you go into your settings and go to advanced features, then S Pen, then Air Actions, you'll see these actions here. But if you tap one of them, then you get a lot of different options. So you get these three basic navigation ones of Home, Back, and Recents, but you can also open up specific S Pen features or any application you'd like. So if, for example, you never use the Recent Apps shortcut, you can change that to something you do use. I tend to use the Magnify feature a lot when I'm not using my glasses, so I'll go ahead and select that. Now, if I do this side carrot here, it'll open up the magnifier, and I can hover over and see what I need to when I don't have my glasses on. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can even customize the air actions for different things like your camera or media controls. All you have to do is tap one of the gestures and select whichever other thing you'd like it to do. If you take a lot of notes with your S Pen, then you're gonna wanna turn on this feature that allows you to simply hold the S Pen button and double tap the screen to start a new note. To enable this, all you have to do is go to Settings, Advanced Features, S Pen, and turn on Create Note with Pen Button. While we're in these settings, I wanna show you guys something else. This isn't one of the unknown features, but it is a cool feature that you should definitely turn on, and it's Pen Proximity Alert. If you turn this on, it'll be a lot harder to lose your S Pen because if you take your S Pen out and then try to walk away with your phone, you'll get this notification that tells you that your S Pen's not attached. If you wanna send someone a small screenshot of just a section of your screen and you don't wanna take a screenshot, then crop it and save it to your phone, then there's a much better way to do that. Just open up your Air Command menu, tap Smart Select, then draw a box around what you wanna send them, and tap pin to screen. Now this box is gonna stay pinned to this screen, and if I tap it, I can minimize it to make it a little bit smaller. Now I just have to go to a messaging or email application, then make this bigger again, long press it, and drag it into either the email or text. From that point, I can tap it and close it without saving it, and now I can send that cropped screenshot without having to save it to my phone. Another way to quickly send images or text is with split screen view. When you're in split screen view, all you have to do is long press on an image until it pops up a bit, then you can just drag it into the other window and drop it. This also works with text. So if I scroll down a little bit and I wanna grab this text, all I have to do is hold the S Pen button down and drag to select the text, then long press, drag it to where I want it, drop it, and it gets transferred right over into the other application. Speaking of selecting text with the S Pen button, what a lot of people don't know about this is you can select text from anywhere. So here I am on my home screen and there's a widget here. If I long press this widget with my finger, it's just gonna select the widget. But if I wanted to select the text, all I have to do is hold that S Pen button down and drag to select, and I can just copy the text right out of the widget. And this works in tons of applications where you normally can't select text with just your finger. If you're like me and watched Galaxy Unpacked where Samsung announced the Galaxy Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra, you may have seen that Samsung Notes now has the ability to include PDFs. And at first, it doesn't sound like that's too awesome or interesting until you open a PDF in Samsung Notes. And the big difference here is that you get way more editing controls when you open a PDF in Samsung Notes versus opening it in Adobe Reader. So first, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you open a document in Adobe's PDF Reader. If I tap this pen icon to edit and tap comment to edit it, I get a highlighter tool, which sort of works like this, but you can't draw with it. It only works by selecting certain areas. Then you get a drawing tool, which you can draw around on. And if you tap that drawing tool, you'll see that it just disappears. There's no different pen types that you can use. You can change the color, but you're limited to a few different colors and you can change the opacity of it, but that's about it. As you can see, you get a few other text options as well, but it's all pretty basic. 
Now, if we go to the Samsung Notes application and open a PDF here, you'll see that I get the full suite of pens, as well as all of the colors and color customization. I also get a highlighter that works very well. So if I go ahead and take this highlighter and highlight some of this text, you'll see that it's kind of grayed out and it's not as bold and vibrant black anymore. But if I let go, you'll see that that black pops again once you're done highlighting. And of course, you can change the highlighter color to whatever you'd like. And you get an eraser, something that's not available on the Adobe application. So here I can just erase bits of it. If I tap the eraser, I can erase the entire stroke instead. And if I wrote some words or drew something, I can take the selection tool and just move it around very effortlessly. This is just so much more powerful for editing PDFs. So if you're someone who marks up PDFs a lot, this is going to be a really powerful tool for you. Samsung's had a feature called Write on Calendar for a while now, and it simply allows you to just write in events on your calendar. However, it's really hard to write in these tiny little areas. And what a lot of people don't realize is that all you have to do is just pinch in and you can zoom in all the way up to 400%. And this makes it a lot easier to write just within a single day in the calendar. Another thing that a lot of people don't know about the Samsung calendar application is if you tap this menu button here, then tap subscription calendars and tap add your interests, you get to this page where you can add sporting events to your calendar automatically. So if I tap sports, I get a list of a bunch of different teams from a bunch of different types of sports. So if there's a sports team you follow very closely, like let's say for example, you follow, let's go with Chicago Bulls, just tap the plus icon here, and let's go ahead and tap the plus icon on a couple other ones. Now, if I go back to my calendar, you'll see that I have this new event here where it's the Clippers against the Mavericks. And this will automatically update my calendar with the schedule from every team I follow so I can see all of their schedules in one place. Link to Windows got way more powerful. If you're not familiar, this is a feature that typically lets you send and receive text on your Windows 10 computer instead of having to pull out your phone. But now, it also lets you open any one of your phone's apps right on your computer. You can also copy photos from your Note 20 directly to your computer or from your computer back to your Note 20. You can even directly attach photos from your computer when sending texts or emails. And if that wasn't enough, you can also mirror your phone's screen on your computer so you can literally control everything on your phone wirelessly. To enable this, just pull down your notification shade twice to reveal all of your quick toggles. Another way to get into this is to just pull down from the top with two fingers. Then tap Link to Windows and follow the prompts. Just know that you do have to connect to a Windows 10 computer and pretty much everything except for sending and receiving texts requires both phones to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Samsung's flagship devices have a Bluetooth sharing feature. So if I go ahead and pull down my notification shade here and tap the media button, then you'll see that I have my Galaxy Buds Live connected to my Note 20 Ultra. If I pull my notification shade down on my S20 Ultra and tap media here, you'll see that I don't have anything connected to this phone, but there is this little music icon with a little share icon next to it. If I tap that, this phone is going to search for any other Samsung devices that have Bluetooth devices connected to them, and it's gonna show me a list of all of the available Bluetooth devices. Now, the Galaxy Buds Live aren't paired to this device. They're only paired to my Note 20 Ultra. However, if I tap this, then it's gonna to ask to connect to that Bluetooth device using my Galaxy Note 20. So if I tap allow, then my Galaxy S20 Ultra will now be connected to the Galaxy Buds Live through the Note 20 Ultra. Now this isn't terribly useful if you're just connecting to one pair of wireless earbuds because only the person you're sharing your music with will be able to hear the music. However, if you add a second pair of wireless earbuds, let me go ahead and open up my Galaxy Buds Plus here and I'll have those connected to this device on the left. So you can see here, I'm connected primarily to the Galaxy Buds Plus, but the Galaxy Buds Live connection is still available. If I tap this, now I'll be connected to two, both devices simultaneously, and I'll be able to control the volume independently. 
Now, this scenario is much more useful. Let's say you travel a lot with your spouse and you guys are often on airplanes. This would be a great way for both of you to be watching the same movie on the same device, but be able to have your own wireless earbuds so you can actually hear it instead of using the phone speakers. And I did test this out and there's no noticeable audio delay in either of the earbuds. So I had one of these buds in my left ear and one of these buds in my right ear and the audio was in sync. Another very practical application for this is if you go to a friend's house and they have a bunch of Bluetooth speakers in their home and you wanna play some music on their speakers. Well, instead of having to unpair their speakers from their device so you can pair your phone to their speakers, you could just pair through their Samsung phone and then when you leave, they won't have to repair their phone to their own speakers. The Samsung Notes app has an incredible feature that allows you to take quick actions on notes that you've already written. So here's a quick note that I wrote in my third grader handwriting. Okay, that's being a little generous. It's more like first grader handwriting, but hopefully you can kind of read what it says. And if I hover my S Pen over one of these, you'll see that I get this quick action up here. So this is a phone number. So if I tap the phone icon, it'll enter that phone number right into the phone app. Next, I have YouTube.com, and if I hover over that, I get a globe icon. If I tap that, it takes me right into the YouTube application. Now, it's really important to point out, it's not just taking me to YouTube the website. It recognizes the fact that I'm trying to go to YouTube the application, and it opens that application. Now, here I have bestbuy.com, and if I tap that globe, it actually opens up the internet application and takes me to bestbuy.com. Next, I have a bogus email address, and if I hover over that, it gives me the option to immediately send an email to this address. And when I tap that, it gives me the option to pick which email client I wanna use. The last thing you can do with this feature is quick math. So here I have five times 10, pretty simple. If I tap this little icon here, it actually opens it up in the calculator and gives me the result. And for another quick example, here's another number, tap this and it gives me the result for that number as well. And in case you're trying to figure out a useful application for this math feature, I actually spoke with a builder who said he uses this all the time when taking a bunch of measurements going on a job, and then he does all the math afterwards using this feature. So if you're a builder with a note device, I highly recommend you check this out. Love it or hate it, when you long press the side key, you're going to get Bixby. But if you don't want the side key to be used for Bixby, you can change that. All you have to do is hold the side key and volume down at the same time, and you'll get this power menu to pop up. And at the bottom, you have this option called side key settings. If you tap that, you can change what the side key does. So by default, pressing and holding, it's gonna wake up Bixby. But if you want, you can have it just open up your power menu and not wake up Bixby. As you can see, you can also change the double press function. So by default, it quick launches the camera, which I do personally prefer, but if you wanted to open a totally different application, you can. I actually do use Bixby, so I'm gonna turn that back on. And if you guys wanna see why I love Bixby and see how powerful it actually is, then you can go ahead and click the card above or click the link in the description. Bixby has a feature that a surprising amount of people have no idea exists, and it's called Bixby Routines, and it's one of the most powerful features on any Samsung smartphone. To get to it, all you have to do is pull down your notification shade twice and find the Bixby Routines toggle and turn that on. So here are just four routines to give you guys an idea of how powerful this is. So this Gaming with Galaxy Buds Plus routine will automatically detect if I have the Galaxy Buds Plus detected and I'm also playing a game. If those two conditions are met, then it's gonna turn off ambient sound on my Galaxy Buds Plus and it's gonna turn on gaming mode, which reduces the audio latency even more. Then once I stop playing a game, it'll revert back to whatever settings I had before I started playing the game. Another routine that I think a lot of people are gonna love is this auto rotate routine that I set up. Now, anytime I'm in the Disney Plus or YouTube application, auto rotate's gonna turn on. But anytime I leave those applications, it's automatically going to turn back off. Driving is a routine that I have that will automatically turn on voice wake up, set my screen orientation to auto rotate, automatically start reading my messages out loud, and start playing music from YouTube Music, as well as unlock my phone and turn off Wi-Fi when it detects that I'm driving. And the way it detects that I'm driving is through Bluetooth. So when I connect through Bluetooth to my car, it'll know that I'm driving and set up all of these settings. But once I disconnect from the Bluetooth in my car, it'll revert back to whatever the settings were before I got in the car. And the last quick example I have for you guys is before bed. 
This one will automatically set my phone to vibrate, turn on my blue light filter, set the brightness to 40%, turn on dark mode, change my lock screen shortcuts, and start a sleep playlist on Spotify. And the before bedtime is automatically detected based on the time that you typically go to sleep. However, if you want to set a specific time, you can do that too. I also want to show you guys how to set up a Bixby routine so you can see how many different options there really are. So if I tap this plus icon, I'll first be asked to set an if statement, and this is going to be the condition or list of conditions that need to be met before the actions are going to take place. And there are a ton of different conditions that you can set up. Now I've covered Bixby routines extensively in another video, so I'm not going to go into all of these, but I just wanted to show you guys how much is actually in here. For now, I'm just going to select manual and click next. Next, we have the then statement. So this is the list of actions that will take place when the conditions are all met. So if I tap here, you'll see that you get a ton of different actions as well. And most of these different actions have a ton of different sub actions as well. So again, I am just scratching the surface here. If you guys want to see just how powerful this is, I highly recommend that you check out that other video that I'll have linked with a card above and a link in the description. And real quick, if you guys are getting value out of this video, let me know by dropping a like down below. Samsung has an application that very few people even know about, and that application is called GoodLock. And I highly, highly recommend that you install this application because this unlocks a ton of features for your Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you guys a few of the things that it can do. Now, this application is so powerful that I could do a single 30 minute video just on this application because there are so many settings you can change, so many things you can enable as well. So in the interest of time, I'm just gonna highlight some of the main features. And if you guys wanna see a lot more about this, like you wanna see a dedicated good luck video, let me know down in the comments below. So all of these here are effectively plugins for your Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This first one is called Lockstar, and it allows you to add a lot more customization to your lock screen. If I tap one of these images, you'll see that you get features like being able to increase the lock screen timeout and completely change up how information is displayed on your lock screen. There's obviously even more that you can do with this application, but again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna move on to the next one. Next, you have a quick star, which allows you to customize your quick panel, which is this panel here with all of these shortcuts. So you get a lot more customization for all of these. Task Changer is a really cool one. This allows you to change the animations and the style of your Task Changer. So if I open up the Task Changer or the recent apps, you'll see that it's this simple card style interface. But if I tap on one of these images, you can see that I could have stacked cards, vertically stacked cards, tiny bubbles that show everything, two columns of bubbles, more rounded cards, and even a simple stack with just the icons and text. Clock face is what you think it is. It allows you to customize the clock face with a little bit more detail. Multistar is an extremely important plugin that you have to install. If you don't install any other ones, please at least install this and test it out because it really enhances the multi-window experience. So right off the bat, if I turn this toggle on, all I have to do is long press the recents button and it'll automatically take me right into split screen view. And then I can now open up any other application and jump right into it. And if you don't wanna do split screen view, you can open in a pop-up view instead. So now if I hold it, it'll just go into a pop-up window. The next option is to enable multi-window for all applications. And if you do this, you will have to restart your phone in order for this to take effect. Now this one is extremely important for anyone who watches Netflix and also wants to do some other things on their phone while those videos are playing. Because for some reason, Netflix is the only video streaming application that I'm aware of that actively blocks the use of multi-window. So as you can see, I have Netflix open right now. And if I tap the icon, I don't get any options for split screen view. However, if I go to any other application, I get split screen view right there on the top. So I've restarted my phone, and now if I tap the Netflix app icon, I do get the option to put it into split screen view. So if you watch a lot of Netflix on your phone, this is a must-have feature. Multi-window screen zoom is another very useful feature, and what it does is it shrinks down the size of everything on your screen when you open it in multi-window view. So as you can see, the text is now smaller, but I can see a lot more, and it makes multi-window a lot more usable. And here it is again with the toggle turned back off. As you can see, you get way less information shown on the screen when that's not enabled. 
Multifocus prevents apps from stopping when they lose focus. Now, this is probably useful for maybe some games, but I personally haven't run into too many apps that stop when you change focus. Pop-up view action is another super useful one. This one allows you to open up any application into a pop-up view simply by swiping down from the top left or right corners. And you can even change the pop-up gesture size. So you can begin swiping from anywhere in these areas in from the corner, and that will now open this app into pop-up view. Obviously that's obnoxiously large, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that smaller again. Keeping pop-up view last used will allow you to retain the last size you had pop-up view set to. So if I had something like really long on the side here, and then I close out of pop-up view mode, then go back into it, you'll see that it's still that really long shape. If that feature was off, and I went back into pop-up view, you'd see that it opens back up into this regular square window. Prevent pop-up view minimization will prevent any pop-up window from being minimized when you hit the home button. So normally, if I have this turned off, and I have a pop-up window, and hit the home button, it'll minimize that pop-up window. So this feature just prevents that from happening. And next, you can change the split screen color to something else. And this is that bar that goes across the middle. So let me just do yellow for now, tap done. And if I go into the recent apps again, and I open up something else like a calculator, then you'll see that the dividing bar is now yellow. Next, you've got navigation bar, which allows you to customize the navigation bar at the bottom. You can add a bunch of different colors. You can change all of the different icons. You can even increase the total number of icons. As you can see here, they have five different icons that do different things. And you can even have functions like opening the camera, turning your screen off, opening the internet browser, and even media controls if you'd like. Next, you get Home Up, which allows you to fully customize your home screen. So as you can see here, they have a custom grid with these 4x4 apps here, and this is not something that's possible with the built-in home screen settings. And the last one on this page is Star, which allows you to customize how your notifications appear. And it even allows you to group notifications. So you can see here, there's a football group, a girlfriend group, and an all group. But we're still not done. On the bottom, you'll see that there's another option called Family. If you tap that, look at that, you get a bunch more options. Specific to Galaxy Note devices is Pentastic, and this is an incredibly powerful tool that allows you to really customize how the S Pen works. Everything from what Air Command looks like to what your pointer looks like, you get different sound effects, you can change your double tap shortcut, and so much more. This is another feature that I can make an entire video on, but my buddy Tech with Brett already made a super in-depth video just on Pentastic, and I highly recommend you guys check out his channel. You can get to it by clicking the card above or the link in the description. If you guys like the in-depth tech videos that I do, then you guys will love Brett's channel. He also does some really in-depth stuff to teach you guys how to get the most out of your devices. Next, we have Wonderland, which allows you to create a custom moving wallpaper. And there's a bunch of different layers that you can combine to make some really cool stuff. It comes preloaded with a few different wallpapers. And as you can see, if I rotate my phone around, then the little characters start moving. Theme Park will allow you to create your own theme for your Samsung device, and this allows you to customize everything from the colors and the icons in the Messages application, your phone application, any built-in Samsung settings or Samsung application, you'll be able to customize with your own colors, backgrounds, etc. If you've ever had a phantom vibration in your pocket from your phone and you take your phone out and you see that there's no notifications or anything, but you're positive your phone just vibrated, Nice Catch will actually show you what application made your phone vibrate. And then you'll know for sure that you're not crazy. One Hand Operation Plus allows you to add a lot of one-handed gestures and features based on the direction you swipe and where you swipe from. And you can map these to anything from navigation buttons, opening different applications. There's a ton of different things that you can do with all these different swipe gestures. Edge Lighting Plus just adds a lot more edge lighting effects. Edge Touch helps prevent accidental touches on the sides of your screen with your palm. 
but I personally haven't had an issue with that, so I don't really think this one's necessary. And last but not least, you have Sound Assistant, which allows you to do cool things like adjust volume for individual applications. So if you like to have music play a little bit louder, but you like to have YouTube videos play a little bit quieter, then you can adjust that with this feature. Another really cool feature in Sound Assistant is multi-sound, which allows you to play sound from two different applications at the same time. This would be useful if maybe you're watching a lecture online, but you want to have a little bit of background music while you watch that lecture. This is a great way to do it. So again, that's just a quick overview of what you can do with GoodLock. I barely scratched the surface with all of the different settings and features. So again, I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and download this right away and test it out. If you play a lot of Xbox games, then you'll be extremely excited to know that you can actually stream a bunch of different Xbox games directly to your Note 20 or Note 20 Ultra. All you need is the Xbox streaming application, and you can play games like Forza 7, Halo 5, a bunch of different Batman games, Borderlands, and so much more right from your phone. And the best part is that you don't even need an Xbox to use this. All you need is your Note 20 Ultra, and an Xbox controller that supports Bluetooth. And if you really wanna take it to the next level, you can actually get a special controller that has an attachment that lets you mount your phone right to the top of the controller to make it a lot easier to game with. I'll have a link to that controller down in the description if you're interested. And in case you're wondering, xCloud even works with DeX, so you can plug your Note 20 Ultra into your TV or a monitor and game on a big screen. The gaming experience through DeX is good, however, the input lag is noticeable enough that you won't be able to play competitively. If you notoriously forget to wish people a happy birthday, then you're going to love this next feature. When you're sending a message, if you tap this little arrow here, then tap the plus icon, you get an option to schedule the message. So now, if you remember that it's going to be someone's birthday in two weeks, you can just write the message now and skip ahead a couple weeks and set the time you want them to get the message, then tap done, and it'll schedule the message for that time. And if you often forget to reply to people after you see a message but don't quite have enough time to reply to them, then you can just long press the message and tap send to reminder, then tap details, tap no alert, and set a time for when you want to be reminded. And in case you're wondering, if I didn't set the reminder time, then it would have still gone into my reminders. I just would have had to have opened the app to see the reminder. This one's a pretty simple one for your lock screen. A lot of people don't actually know that you can just swipe across your time and actually see a bunch of different things. Everything from the music you're playing to upcoming events you have, alarms for the next seven days. It's a lot of different things that you can see here. And if you tap one of them, you can actually see more information. If you want to customize those, all you have to do is go to your settings, go to lock screen, and select face widgets. And from here, you can turn them on or off, and you can even reorder them. Many of you know about wireless decks, which lets you turn your Note 20 Ultra into a full-blown desktop computer using any TV or monitor with Miracast support. But you probably didn't know that decks can also be controlled by some TV remotes, complete with pointer and clicking functionality. And in case you guys are wondering, this TV is an LG 55EF9500, which is an earlier generation OLED TV. I highly recommend OLED TVs, and I'll have a link in the description to the latest generation that I have my eyes set on if you want to learn more about it. Since wireless DeX relies on a technology called Miracast, you won't be able to use something like a Chromecast to connect to wireless DeX because Chromecast uses a different type of technology. However, you can get an adapter from Microsoft that does support Miracast, and this one works excellently. All you have to do is plug the HDMI side into an HDMI port and plug the USB side into an available USB port for power. Once Microsoft's adapter is connected, all you have to do is tap the DeX toggle in your quick toggles. You get a notification asking if you want to connect to the adapter. Tap start now, and that'll wirelessly connect to the monitor. Then if you want to use your phone as a trackpad and keyboard, just pull down your notifications and tap use your phone as a touchpad. And now I can navigate around the screen using my phone as a touchpad. And if I tap in a text field, I'll get a pop-up keyboard. When you're taking a photo with night mode, the amount of time that the photo is going to be taken for depends on how steadily you're holding the phone. So the steadier you can hold the phone, the longer the time is, all the way up to 20 seconds. And for reference, here's a handheld photo I took just by resting my elbows on my knees. And here's another shot that shows how dark it actually was in person. 
So as you can see, Samsung has really stepped up their game with nighttime photos. If you guys found this video helpful and want to help me out, go ahead and drop a like down below to help me beat the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on all the coolest features on your tech devices. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.